and gentlemen, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of the Hyper Conscious Podcast. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode where we sat down and talked about taking the leap. Today, for episode number 305, we are going to do a scratching the surface episode on 10 lies you have been believing. These are all sayings that we all grew up hearing, but they are mis. Truths. But before we jump into this episode, I want you to go to the hyperconsciouspodcast.com, which is being redone, by the way. It is being redone by the amazing Tiffany Wells. Uh, Thank you so much, Tiff. And join on, uh, click on, (laughs) derailed my promo. Click on hashtag join hyperconscious nation. Is that what it is? (laughs) And then you're going to be entered to win. (laughs) Power through it. Power through it. You're going to be entered into our private Facebook group. No, seriously, though, I've been posting consistently in there. We actually just had someone share her story in there. Thank you, Olivia, for doing that. And it's going to be a community of growth-minded, like-minded individuals who want to live life on their own terms. Folks, if you're anything like Kevin and I at the beginning of our journey, this is a different road, a more challenging road, and you're going to need people on your team and in your tribe that can support you and understand you. Yes. Speaking of being on your team and in your tribe, we have built a nice little community of people through coaching. Oh, yeah. You know, think like our event in Florida, we had a bunch of our clients down there. Our event in Mass, we had a bunch of our clients there. If you guys are looking to get in the best shape of your life, Alan is your guy. If you're looking to start your podcast and make this the year of your podcast, I am your guy. I think that we're good coaches and we're good human beings and we want to help as many people as possible. So if you're looking for either one of those things, do not hesitate to reach out. Lazarus 88 on the gram. Never quit kid on the gram. And then also... Alan at the hyperconsciouspodcast.com, Kevin at the hyperconsciouspodcast.com. Those are our emails directly to us. And I also do business coaching, peak performance business coaching sure. as well. All right. So today we're going to talk about 10 lies you have been believing and how they're holding you back. And this might be a little, uh, what's the word I'm looking for when it's like hardcore? No, 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 not that one. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. Uh, hmm. It's like questionable, not questionable. Brash? Maybe. Yeah, it might ruffle some feathers. Ruffle some feathers. So, that's, number that's one, goal. everything happens for a reason. Okay, so this is what this is what you'll hear. And let's preface this with saying if you have the right mindset and the growth mindset, then you probably already understand that there's a caveat to every single one of these. But if you ever heard somebody say like, well, you know, I went out the other night and I got hammered and I got a DUI, but everything happens for a reason. Right. The reason is because you got hammered and you got behind the wheel of your car. And you made a bad decision. You made a bad decision. Right. Now, everything happens and then you justify it and you decide the reason. Exactly. Right? So, your business didn't fail necessarily so that you could learn a lesson. Like, your business probably failed because you weren't managing the books very well. Right. And you decided, and this might be a good thing too, you decided that, well, this happened to teach me a lesson that I need to run my books better. But if you have to understand, like, yeah, everything happens for a reason, but you have to determine and you have to take ownership of what that actual reason is. Right. Because if you don't know the root cause of what caused the problem, right, then you can't change it. And here's the thing, too. Like, people excuse their own bad decisions away. Like, if you married the wrong person or started the wrong business or got into the wrong career, yes, everything happens for a reason. Maybe you made a bad choice. That's okay. Take ownership for the bad choice so that you can invest better choices in the future. Yeah, and I, I just think that if you're not in control of what you're doing and you're blaming it on something else, you know... What's an example? I mean, I think we've all had... Oh, yeah. We've all had things that we say, like, oh, everything happens for a reason. But I think you're, the reason you're giving that is only good as what you're actually trying for in life. You so know what I mean? Remember when Lori Harder said that most successful people always choose the empowering version of the story? Yes. Yeah, that's kind of the, what we're talking about right. here. Like, choose the reason... But don't use it as an excuse. Don't lie to yourself. Right. Like everything that we talk about is, this whole episode is going to be basically living in the truth. Basically. Because a lot of these are like, they they want you to feel good. These sayings are made so you'll feel good. Not necessarily be effective. Yeah, not necessarily be effective. And that's what we want you to do. Like, does everything happen for a reason? Yes, but you assign the reason. And if it's a dumb reason and a reason that doesn't help you get better, then did you actually learn the lesson that you were supposed to? Exactly. Okay, so there's number one. Number two, love conquers all. Yes. So Kevin chose this one. Why? I chose this one because 
you can love somebody or something a lot, but if you're not getting better in inter- like, I think love in proper communication paired with consistency can conquer a lot. I don't think that love conquers all because I have loved people. And then again, I don't know that I really did. I think that's something I learned with Taryn. I don't think I've ever truly been in love until I met her. So maybe, maybe I haven't felt it the right way, but I've loved things and it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily conquer all. No, it certainly doesn't. And I How think many, I say falling in love is easy. Yeah. Sustaining it is really, really challenging. But if you love somebody and you're in an abusive relationship, does that love conquer all of the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual? No. It doesn't it doesn't work that way. Just because you're in love does not mean it's gonna sustain long term. No. But why is that a saying then? Is I it from a movie? Th- Remember I asked you that question on episode one of the podcast? Yeah, yeah. I said, dude, what do you think about like <laughs> sitcoms, man? Sitcoms and movies that say like, you know, love conquers all and this guy will he'll be like kind of an idiot and right. they'll meet this like super amazing woman and they'll fall in love and then she'll be like oh you're kind of an idiot but I like you <laughs> and that's that's possible too like I'm an idiot a lot of the time you know I'm the I'm the funny person on this show like I'm <laughs> I, I tease myself and I'm I try to make fun of myself as much as I can but I just think that Hollywood oh yeah and all of that it kind of gives like it gives you a false sense of what really is it it really really does it gives you a very it's a highlight reel no one wants to it doesn't make for Dude, the mundane behind the scenes work that we do in our relationships, like yeah. the systems, you're not seeing a check in right in a sitcom. Hey, how good was I at love and connection this week? Honestly, you kind of sucked right. because you were just making jokes being an idiot. You're not that doesn't make for riveting movies or or, you know, inspiring books. There's something called the narrative bias. That's why I like reading books uh that are biographies. Like Ben Franklin's biography. Benny like, Frank. It 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 gets rid of most of the narrative bias because it's a longer form. Also, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger has a biography called Total Recall, My Unbelievably True Life Story. And it's fascinating because if you look at Arnold Schwarzenegger's highlight reel, it looks phenomenal. But when you really unpack what it took, it's un- it's a new perspective, a much more truthful perspective. So what well. what do you think that should be? For Love Conquers All... Dude, I love this episode. So... I would say love is a critical component to successfully growing and contributing. Yeah, I think it's implied that love means a successful relationship. In this, I think love, if you took love out and put a consistent, successful, growth-minded relationship conquers all. Right. Because I I think it can. I think love is a verb. That's another thing. Like, Love is a feeling, but it's also a verb. So, like, if you want to feel love, I'm reading The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He talked about this in the book. If you don't feel like you're in love, maybe you stopped doing what you originally were doing. Mm. So, like, if you've fallen out of love, love is the feeling of love, I believe, is a byproduct of the verb of love. That video I sent you? I didn't watch it yet. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) I I was hoping hoping we weren't going to get to this point. (laughs) But we did. Um, Anyways, it's just a short clip where it showed this guy giving to a bunch of people and and what emotions he was feeling with all that kind giving. And so the the feeling of love, I think, comes from an act of love, consistent giving. What if we Jeff this, and when they say love conquers all, they mean in the grand scheme of things, like if the world was a more loving place, it would conquer evil. Right. I kind of, I don't necessarily, I do believe that. I think love is the way. I think we have to be way more loving with one another. But I think... If you're in a, in a uh, in a intimate relationship with somebody, can't talk. I think it takes <laughs> way more than love. Yeah, because relationships are hard. Yeah, trust, communication, check ins. Systems. I had I had somebody recently say to me like, I've seen you and Taryn together, and I've heard you on the podcast talk about her, and I got into like the best relationship I've ever been in. And I thought it was going to be easy, mm. and I was like, yes, it's it looks easy. At times, in the public, it looks easy. Right. But that's because behind the scenes, we're doing the check-ins. We're right. having the conversations where we're both crying and like, I'm mad because I'm not, I'm not living up to who I want to be. Right. You know? And I think that, I think if what you think you're seeing is love, there's way more that goes into that behind the scenes. Episode 301, we did five ways to improve your intimate relationship yes. that goes behind the scenes on a lot of that as yes. well. Okay. The next one's huge. Ignorance is bliss. Yes. I dislike strongly this saying. I think ignorance is devastation, especially on the macro. So ignorance is bliss on 
the micro. So what's an example? Um, <clears throat> so if you're not checking your bank account, yep. Yes, that's it's better. Let's say your bank account is negative ten thousand, okay, and the interest is accruing. So every single month, it's more and more and more. Not checking your bank account is momentary bliss. Checking your bank account and actually solving the long term problem is long term bliss. So ignorance is bliss in the moment, but actually devastating long term. Well, basically, I think what that is actually saying is feedback is not feedback hurts. Of course it does. Right. right. Ignorance is bliss. You're not getting any feedback, which is nice. Right. Now, maybe, yeah, sure. Ignorance is bliss in the moment, like Alan said. But if you're listening to this podcast, we've all, this teaser, this teaser, this meme that I've seen before is basically like, it's one of those things like, you know, when you know you should check your bank account, but you don't because you know there's no money in there. Oh, yeah. What if you checking your bank account motivates you to save more money? Exactly. Ignorance is not bliss. It's, it is. It's setting you up for failure long term. I talked to Emilia about that this weekend. I, I We went through the <clears throat> a lot of the human condition, PMES, central nervous system, peripheral nervous system, all that stuff we were masterminding. And I, I talked about the feedback loop of, you know how uh, Brennan Burchard said that like Netflix has no feedback. Yeah. So you get no pain. Like you, you get the thrill of doing challenging things and accomplishing things in movies and, and TV shows but you don't have any feedback on self. There's no self-reflection right. there. And so, w- uh, one example of ignorance is not acknowledging my drinking problem. Yeah, maybe that was blissful because it would have been painful to admit to myself, like, wow, like I should really fix this. But long-term, 10, 20 years down the road when my brain isn't as functional because I drank, that's devastation. That's not bliss. It, this, that saying is the opposite of hyperconsciousness. I know. That's it basically is the opposite. Like it's okay if you don't know what's going on right now because it doesn't hurt you. Which is consciously. Not true. Yeah, right. But it does actually hurt you long term. Forever. Time. Yeah, forever. forever. Right. Right? Okay. That's that's an interesting one. All right, number four. <laughs> we so we got fifteen minutes, so we yep. gotta we got a time. We got a hammer. Okay. So you can't teach an old dog new tricks. This might be the one that I think is the most wrong because I le- everything that you're listening to, everything that you have heard me say over the last three years, I have learned in the past three years. Right. <laughs> everything. You can teach an old Kevin new You can dog. teach. You can teach. <laughs> <laughs> you can teach and you can learn what you're willing to learn. That's called, that's called, I'm listening to Mindset. That's By Carol Ka- Dwick. Carol Dwick. That's what it's all about. Having yeah. a growth mindset means that you actually can teach old dogs new tricks one of the caveats to that though i was talking to alex hinkle yesterday i'll be quick about this but he said that have you ever seen one of those reverse bikes the ones that when you when you turn it to the right the wheel goes left no it takes apparently like 80 days of riding that bike to like to like unwire Mm. how to ride, ride a real bike when they switch back it's really hard to ride a regular bike but in 15 minutes it shifts and rewires back because of the brain grooves so yes you can't teach an old dog new tricks is not true. What it should say is you can teach an old dog new tricks, but it's way harder and requires some pain. Yeah. Yeah, I, but I think it's like that with anything. Right. Basically, you can't teach an old dog new tricks is saying you can't learn. Right. When we're kids, we have a myelin sheath around our neurons, so it's easier. Like if you start snowboarding at four, right. it's very hard to catch up to someone who started snowboarding at four. Yeah. Because of the way the brain Neuroscience actually works, but anyways, so what do you think that one should <laughs> Enough be? Enough about me, right? You can learn whatever you're willing to try. Like it's just going to take time, right? Like find something where learning is either necessary or unbelievably desirable, and you will learn eventually. There's a fire quote, and then we'll go to the next one. Life is actually it's Gary Keller in the one thing he says. Life is actually a short race. It's an all-out sprint to create a habit, and then it's a marathon. Yeah, that's really good. That's, I like that. That's fire. Okay. okay, number five. Money is the root of all evil. Mm. Go ahead. What do you think that should be? I think it should be... I mean, money doesn't have anything to do with evil. Right. Money makes you more of what you are. I think it's ego is the root of all evil. Wow. Yeah. Because... People that, that's the thing. If money makes you more of what you are, if you're an egotistical person, you're going to become more egotistical when you have money, and money is going to give you more opportunity to impact people differently. Mm. And, like, you know, you can think of 
Like, think of Bill Gates. Right. Bill Gates does a lot with his money. He donates, like, millions of dollars every single year to AIDS. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Charities. Right? All sorts of different things. When he dies... Bill he's, and Melinda. Yeah. Gates, yeah. Yeah. And th- when he dies, they're donating, like, all of their money. All of it. Almost all of it. If I was their children, I would be pissed. <laughs> but, <laughs> but imagine that. I think that it's, it's very simple to see somebody wealthy and be like, oh, that, that, person's, that person's kind of a dick. Like, it's because they have money. They were probably not a nice person before they had money. Right. But I'm sure there's, like, you might, maybe you don't know because you don't see it that often. Well, we have mentors that are very wealthy that are, that's one of the benefits of a mentor. Yeah. Having them be really wealthy and then seeing the truth. Yeah, and the, the problem is, if you think money is the root of all evil, you're never going to try to get money. We talked about that in one of the episodes, why you should love money. Yeah. And, you know, I just think that, what episode was that? I don't know, check it out. I just think that for most people, if you believe these sayings, you might use them as justification. A justification to not take action. And I think that's what a lot of these right. are about. What episode was that? You know, it would really help if you just went on YouTube. Oh, and then search it. And search it. But it's got to be on YouTube Studio. Oh, no, it doesn't. It would probably make things easier, though. I have to go to your account. All right, so while Alan does that, we're going to jump to... Do you have anything to say about that one? So I would say money is a tool, and... It's not the tool that's the problem, it's the wielder. The wielder. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Maybe like with great respons- with great power comes great responsibility and a lot of people come into money and they're not ready to have that great power yet. Right. If you if you I think money is energy and if you direct the energy in the right way, it's not evil at all. It's actually quite the opposite. Oh, I got a burp, sorry. Number 6, if it's not broke, don't fix it. This go. This is very similar to you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but this. I think the saying should be, if it's not the best it can be, try to improve it. Right. If it, if it could be better, try to improve it. Try to improve it. Yeah. When I was in the fire academy, <laughs> it was just a little bit about me. That's something that they used to say. They used to say like, I, th- I think that's a broken thing because this is what happens. What happens when it does break? People die. People die. Right. If it's not broke, don't fix it. When it breaks, people die. Like the Titanic. The Titanic, for example. Back then, the Titanic did not break any laws by not having enough lifeboats lifeboats on. It actually, I think it had more than it needed to, to be up to code. After that happened... They changed what was the code. Yeah. The code. Why? Because it it wasn't broken. They didn't need to fix it. But when I don't remember how many people died, I think it was like fifteen hundred or something. Yeah. Then they decided, you know what? This is broken. We need to fix it. So that's the problem. There is pain between when it breaks and when it gets fixed. Same with airlines too. That that was a thing for a while as well. I'm still. Are you still struggling? Right, you str- you talk about this. I'll get all it. Right, all right. Kevin's better at finding the episodes than I. Brutal. Okay. So if it's not broke, don't fix it. Greg Plitt has a quote. <clears throat> he says, if, it's, if it could be better, then it's as good as broken. That's a little more hardcore. Like Honestly, continuous improvement, right? There is no such thing. Imagine this podcast, so you're watching it or listening to it. Like, Imagine if we had that mentality. If it's not broke, don't fix it. We would just still have you know, a terrible backdrop. With We actually are considering moving over to a different side of the studio because it might look better. Number what we're doing is not 268. Yeah. Why you should no wonder why I didn't find it. I didn't scroll down enough. So why you should love money? If if you believed, grew up believing money is the root of all evil, go see episode number two sixty eight. Yes. iTunes, Buzzsprout, Spotify, Spotify, YouTube, A- Apple. It's actually Apple Podcasts, not Spo- uh, not iTunes. Oh, Apple Podcasts. Okay. So if it's not broken, don't fix it. So we're about to actually potentially change backdrops. Why would we change a backdrop if this one's good enough? Right. But there is no such thing as good enough. If you're not improving, by default, you're getting worse or staying the same in a world where most people are improving. So yes. if you're in business, you you got to keep improving. Your yes. relationship, same deal. If it's not getting better, it's it's stagnant. It's getting worse. Right. If you're not if you're not growing, you're dying. Right. Technically, that I actually do believe. At the end of the day. Okay. Better safe than sorry. Oh, what happened here? Oh, because you were on YouTube. Go ahead. Okay. Speaking of the backdrop needing to be... Fixed. We'll fix that. It is broken. We'll right fix now. that in a GIF. All right, number seven. Better safe than sorry. So this one is the opposite of the episode we just recorded on Take the Leap. So better safe than sorry. Why would I have sent that DM to Emilia if her Facebook said she was in a relationship and I don't want to be a homewrecker? Why better safe than sorry? Okay, I might as well not send the message. Yeah. 
<laughs> just waiting for the thing to come up. Yeah. Well, I think, again, um, let's see. If it's something that's not necessary, like, you know, I'm going to go ice fishing today. Uh, you know what? The ice looks like it's not safe. Better safe than sorry. We'll wait till tomorrow. Sure. Right. Sure. But th- this is the opposite of dream chasing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you better safe than sorry? It depends what sorry means. If sorry means that you learn a valuable life lesson that changes your life, no, you're not better safe than sorry. Right. If, if being better safe than sorry means you don't get on a plane because you're afraid, then you end up sorry 20 years later because you never got out of your comfort zone, you never grew your business, you never became a speaker because you didn't, you didn't travel. Like, no, I don't, I don't think that. Oh, it's brutal belief. It's, 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 I was that way for a long time. If you thought better safe than sorry, you never would have went to Florida, you never would have went to no. England, you never would have went to Arizona, you never would have went to California. Now, again, if it's something that's going to kill you, sure. Right. But how often do we actually face those things? Yeah, don't jump in a snake pit right. for no reason. Like, I think that comes down to why power as well. If the reason's big enough... You need to take the leap. Yeah. What should that saying be? <sighs> better. Better try and fail than not try at all. Yeah, I think that's probably better. Yeah. Better try than regret. Ooh, fire. All right. Knowledge is power, number eight. Knowledge is potential. You can read every book on the face of the earth. God, again, Alan said this in a recent episode. You can read a book on how to do push-ups for the rest of your life, but until you start doing them, right. you're never going to figure it out. Like... I think you have to be in the pool to learn how to swim. And if you hear a speech from Kevin, come to one of our events, he'll probably have you do push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> Burned him. If his speech isn't going well, he I will have you do push-ups. You should have them do some sort of fitness oh, stuff. You're sure. the fitness guy, I know, right? But I'm doing it. <laughs> so, again, what is knowledge to you? It's potential. Yeah. Why? What is the difference? How do you take knowledge and actually turn it into power? So, knowledge good is question, potential power. It is a great question. So... Knowledge is not power. Knowledge is potential power. Because you have to emotionalize it. There have been studies where they there's this these people who uh, had brain damage and they couldn't... I think their basal ganglia was uh, messed up, which is the fear center and the, the emotion center of the brain, and they couldn't feel emotion, so they actually couldn't make a decision. Mm. So if you have a lot of knowledge, but you don't have an emotional reason to, to act, like you and I talk about why power all the time, like... If there's a burning building and there's a $20 bill in there, I don't care if you know the $20 bill's in there. It's not a big enough reason, emotional reason, to go in there. Whereas if your daughter was in there, you'd go in in a heartbeat. So you can know how to fight a fire, but you're not going to do it unless you have a good enough reason. Yeah, and I think you can know everything there is about relationships, right? Right. But if you're not in a relationship practicing it, it doesn't matter. It's not potential. Uh, it's not power, it's potential power. And even if you are in a relationship, but you're not doing it... Yeah. Right. I- exactly. So, yeah. I think knowledge plus action is power. I think knowledge plus action plus consistency <gasps> is plus, power. plus reflection is, pa- is See, power. See, the problem is nobody would ever say that. That's, that's, <laughs> it's a tough saying. That's why it's not said. I know. Right. But again, like, you guys... There's a chance if you're, like, not a chance. You definitely know more than I do about a lot of things. Oh, yeah. But if you're not taking action, like, imagine if in your mind you were living with knowledge is power and um, better safe than sorry. If you were listening, if you were living with those two things as fundamental beliefs, you're going to learn all the time and do nothing. And do nothing about it. Yep. All right. Number nine, seeing is believing. Ooh. In my speech at Top Notch Live 2020, I talked about, I pulled up on, a, on my PowerPoint a picture of a kitten. A kitten? Kitten. Looking into a <laughs> puddle of water Meow. and seeing a big tiger. Yeah. And by kitten, I mean a, a small tiger. So, seeing is believing. This is kind of like, I'll believe it when I see it. I think you have to believe it first, otherwise you'll never see it. Um, in my speeches, I often say the following phrase. Cars were imagined when there were only horses. Horses. Planes were imagined when there were only cars. Cars. Spaceships <laughs> were, <laughs> were imagined when there was only planes. Spaceships. Imagine what we're imagining now. Uh, I like that. Thank you, brother. Who'd you steal that from? I did that one. Believe it or not, that was me. World class. Yeah. Thank you. So, seeing is believing. Imagine whatever it is that you guys have in your imagination out there. Like, Harry Potter didn't exist until J.K. Rowling saw it first. And then she wrote it down, and then now it's a movie where we can all see it, and it's a bunch of books. Like, seeing is believing. No, she had to believe in that story, 
long before any of us saw it. And I think this is one of the most insidious beliefs that we have up here right now, lies. Yeah, I th- that was me for a long time. I used to say that. I used to say, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Well, this then is, you'll never see it. You ever th- I think of it this way. If I was to ask you, do you believe in ghosts? Right? If I was to come up to you, if you're watching or listening, this, listening to this, and, say, and ask you, have, like, do you believe in ghosts? Your believing, it is totally reliant on your seeing. So think of it this way. If you believe in ghosts, when you hear a noise, you're going to think it's a ghost versus somebody who doesn't believe who's going to be like, oh, it must have been this. Must have been, yeah. And a it, mouse it, the something. only difference is you believe it. Right. And that's why, and again, I've never, I don't necessarily believe in ghosts because I don't think I've seen them, but that's the thing. Like, you'll never see something if you don't believe in it first. So the, one of the only arenas where I struggled with this one is, and you remember this, Kev, I, I was afraid that my dream woman wasn't out there. Yes. Because... I didn't believe enough in that. Therefore, I never saw it. As soon as we had that call with the team and I started to really own what I really wanted in an intimate relationship, all of a sudden, now I... Imagine you want to buy a car. If you don't believe that a red Ferrari with leather interior, black leather interior with a spoiler that also flies, if you don't believe that exists, then you're never going to see it even if it did. Right. It's going to be right over your perifs. You're not even going to notice it. Um, Because that's the filter in which you see the world. Okay, number 10. Number 10, if you can't beat them, join them. That is the best way ever to not change the world. Mm. And if you do change the world, you'll be changing it in the way that it's already being changed. That basically is saying like, well, if if you're not winning, just admit that you're not a winner and go join people who are winning. And like, I think Alan and I are trying to do a lot of things differently than other people. I could very easily throw up clickbait on YouTube and show, like, put up a picture of a girl in a bikini, right? Or I could use that as my teaser clips. I don't want to do that. Right. It's For us, it's if you're not beating them, keep being real, find and you'll a, win eventually. Find another way, yeah. Yeah, and I think th- this is the biggest, one of the biggest ones because you're not, whoever them is, you're not going to be able to beat them right away, whoever that is. And sometimes beating them is actually trying to figure out how to beat yourself. For me, imagine if I had this belief trying to overcome drinking it yeah was, like i for years um and still to this day certain people are like oh are you ever gonna drink again are you gonna drink with us again and if you can't beat them join them like they, for a long time it was really hard for me not to drink in old environments where i used to do a lot of that because a lot of my relationships were built on parties and and having fun in that spe- specific way and when i stopped that if I had the mentality of, ah, can't beat them, join them, I, there's no way I wouldn't have thrown in the towel. There's no way I'd be the man I am today. There's no way. So these are these are really, like... These are fire. Yeah, these are these are bad news. So make sure, if you're listening to this, you don't take everything as, like, you know, use your own perception and understanding on these. But if you, if you have a growth mindset, you probably are thinking to yourself, okay, I, that's how I thought I should see these. Right. If you're somebody who's a pessimist, you're going to see these as excuses. And these are going to be like ways for you to lean on, you know, the things that you're, you've been doing. But if you have a growth mindset, you're going to understand that like, you know what? Everything happens and I decide the reason. Dude, quickly. I just had a breakthrough and we got to go. But every single one of these is an excuse not to change. Yes. Everything happens for a reason. Okay. Like, don't have well, there's nothing I can do about it. Love conquers all. I don't have to change and improve. Ignorance is bliss. I don't have to get the feedback, which will prompt change. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah. No change. Money is the root of all evil. I don't have to go chase money Justifies, now. Justifies, yeah. If it's not broke, don't fix it. I don't have to change it. Better safe than sorry. I don't have to even try. Knowledge is power. Um, that's basically doing having knowledge, but not actually acting. I have enough. You what have I have enough. is enough. Exactly. Seeing is believing. Meaning, I'll, I don't have to try to manifest something new. If you can't beat them, join them. That's, I'm not going to stick to what I, in, I want to change. I'm going to go with the pack. I'm going to go with That's fire. Dude, all of these are excuses not to change. And that's the opposite of hyperconscious. So we're going to have to do an episode on change and how it can be painful, but it's always worth it. Let's do it. In the future. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, please share it with your friends on Instagram. Tag Alan myself. The camera just shut off. We hope you enjoyed it. We will talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>